What's up, guys? This is Sam from Dodgers Debrief, and today we're going to be talking about the relief pitcher that the Dodgers signed this morning, Tommy Canely. So, Canely has spent most of his career pitching in pretty high leverage situations for the New York Yankees, dominating especially in 2016 and 2017, as you can see from these stats, and still pitching out pretty well in 2019 after a, you know, a down 2018. So, Canely did undergo Tommy John surgery in August, though, so he likely won't be available until at least September of 2021, if not until 2022, coming back with Caleb Ferguson. However, the Dodgers signed him for two years, so they clearly believe that they can help him recover his pre-surgery form for, again, primarily the 2022 season. My hope, though, is that he can maybe be a part of the bullpen in uh, September in the playoffs next year, although you know that, that may be a little bit of wishful thinking on my part. So if we examine Canley's last full year in the majors, which was 2019, we can see that he's still a very good reliever. Looking at his stat cast percentiles, we can see clearly that he's in very good shape, but could maybe cut down on the walks a little bit. However, since he's barely getting hit at all, especially with that really high strikeout rate, it's not too much of an issue. So, Canley mostly throws a fastball and changeup, and also has, you know, trended towards using them at a pretty equal percentage as he's progressed in his career, which is, you know, unusual for some pitchers, but with a changeup as good as Canley's, uh, it makes sense. He also occasionally mixes in a slider, but uh, not too much, as you can see from uh, those usage rates. So that changeup, though, is his money pitch. And in 2019, opponents swung and missed at about 50% of the changeups that he threw. And uh, as you can see here, they basically couldn't do anything with it. Additionally, Canley's been great for the Yankees in the playoffs with a career 233 ERA and .776 whip in 19.1 playoff innings. Obviously, you know, it doesn't indicate future success with the Dodgers and in the playoffs, but, you know, it's nice to see that he has in the past been reliable in October and uh, has pitched well in high leverage situations. Another thing the Dodgers will definitely like is that Canley virtually lacks platoon splits because his best pitch, you know, is that changeup, and it's mostly moving down instead of away or towards another batter, so it makes it pretty easy. Uh, or it doesn't make too big of a difference based on the handedness of the batter, kind of as we saw with uh, Pedro Baez, who um, is currently a free agent. So meaning that this means that basically Canley is as good as versus righties as he is versus lefties, which makes him a very reliable pitcher, batter to batter, and can kind of pitch a whole inning, especially with that free batter minimum that is now in place for pitchers for the foreseeable future. So while his prime years are mostly likely, uh, you know, they probably are behind Canley as he is 31. If he's healthy, he can, Canley can still be a very effective reliever for the Dodgers as he's sort of their, uh, you know, their classic reclamation project for a pitcher who's been hurt or underperforming as we see them, um, taking on with Corey Knable and Brandon Morrow this year, and they did uh, very successfully with Blake Trinan last year. So as you can see here, his Fangraph Zips projections here are actually very encouraging, although he likely won't pitch much in 2021 as he recovers from Tommy John surgery. But it looks as though he's um, projected to kind of recover and be just, a bit, just about as good as he was pre-surgery, which is really encouraging to see. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this kind of this brief overview of uh, Canley and um, kind of how he pitches. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, let me know what you think of this signing in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, but do feel free to uh, leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments. In my next video, I'll be breaking down some fan trade proposals from Twitter, which is, you know, always get some interesting proposals there, so uh, stay tuned for that later this week. See you guys in the next video.